واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ما شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It's good to be home here MashaAllah in Masjid Farooq And we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him and we seek His forgiveness And we seek His assistance And we seek refuge with Allah From the evil that resides within our own selves And from the bad consequences of our own deeds And that's what we're here to talk about today Sayyat Sins Astaghfirullah, absolutely Astaghfirullah Getting to the end of the lecture though, brother. <laughs> Appreciate you though. Appreciate that. He might have saw it. Yeah, buddy, he might have seen this before from someone else. We're here to talk about sins, brothers. Sins. Any sinners? Any sinners in the building? MashaAllah. You can raise your hands. I can't see you anyway. Raise your hands. Any <laughs> MashaAllah, there are some sinners in the building. Sinner giving the speech. But what are sins? Are sins just like Random mistakes, like if I put this on wrong, this here, if, if I don't put it on the way it is, like the, like the brother from Oman taught me 25 years ago, is, is it a sin or is it a mistake? I don't even know if it's either. <laughs> it might not look very nice if I, if, I, if, I, if I do it wrong, but it's not a mistake, it's not a sin. If I miss a rak'ah in asr, unintentionally, is it a sin? Is it? No. What if I just don't do it? What if I say, I don't want to pray four, I'll pray three? That's a sin. That's a sin. Hitting my brother's car unintentionally isn't a sin, is it? Taking a baseball bat to his headlights, though, intentionally most certainly is. Allah decides what sins are. We don't. Allah decides what sins are. Who decides? Allah decides what sins are. I can't just make up things off the top of the dome and tell you what sins are and say, this is bad and that's bad. This is good and that's good. This is lawful and this is awful. I can't do that. When you're going to tell someone about sins, you have to tell them about the judge of sins. Some communities don't necessarily do that though, do they? The Jewish people, they have... Yom Kippur, I'm not going to talk badly about these communities. I'm just going to try to tell you what they have to the best of my ability. The Jews have a day of atonement. And that's the day that God forgives them of their sins. One day. Now Zionists, I don't know, I don't have a day like that. They harm me all year. <laughs> At least Jewish people, mashallah, they, they seek forgiveness for their sins. And that's why I want to talk about them and leave that other group, that imposter group of them alone. They don't believe in anything except harming us. <laughs> May Allah rid us of them soon. Alhamdulillah. But that has nothing to do with them. Christians have a concept of sin as well. Do they? Don't they? Do they? They have a little different concept than the rest of the people though. Because they want someone else to pay the bill. <laughs> so you do whatever you want to do. Asa got you. That's what they believe, isn't it? Is that what they believe? Asa got you. Sort of. Because that wasn't taught to them by Asa. The origins, and I'm not going to talk much about this, the origins of Christianity are, is, is of course Isa ibn Maryam and his followers, and they were Muslims. May Allah be pleased with them. Alayhi salatu wasalam, Alayhi ibn Maryam. 
But another guy came, and his name was Paul. And Paul changed the idea of Christianity to this doctrine that you see right now. And we ask Allah to guide the, the good from them, and we ask Allah to protect us from any others. But if to Allah I call, then I would rather fall in a brawl than fall for an imposter named Paul. And that's why we're here today. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came. And since he's the messenger of Allah, he is the only one qualified now to talk to us about sins. Isn't that right? I mean directly qualified in that sense. He's the messenger of Allah. He received the message from Allah. He knows what sins are and what they are not. So his sunnah dictates that to us. Is that right or wrong? The Quran and the sunnah. Is that right? If I'm wrong, brother, you don't, don't nod. I can't. You do this. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Y'all be nodding and shaking your heads. They all sound the same, right? So if I say, is that right? I need you to help me out here. You know, mashallah. So is that right or no? All right. Mashallah. All five of y'all. Appreciate you. May Allah give everybody who answers me Jannah to Firdaus and A'la. Here. I done solidified it for y'all right now. Now, is that right or no? Oh, a few more. <laughs> okay. I love Mrs. Saga, man. Um, causes of sins. Arrogance would be one of them. Iblis. When he betrayed himself and he refused to obey Allah when he ordered him to bow to Adam. Could Iblis have, at that time, just said, you know what, I was wrong, astaghfirullah. Could he have done that? He could have done that, right? I'm not, I, yeah, he could have actually done that. He could have said, I'm sorry, astaghfirullah. But when Allah asked him why, he said, ana khayru min. I'm better than him. Meaning Adam. Khalaqtahu min teen, khalaqtahu min teen. You made me from fire and you made him from clay. I'm better than him and that's why I didn't bow to him. Imagine telling Allah that. Allah tells you, brother, pray five times a day. And your imam is from, insert a country. You show up and the imam is there. You don't want to pray. And your reply, when a brother comes to you and asks you, brother, why you didn't pray, pray behind this imam? I'm better than him. You do that, right? I'm from here. He's from there. Imagine what a silly response that would be. You lose the ajr of a, 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 of a salah because you don't like where the imam is from. Well, this little jinn decides that because he's so cool and he thinks he's so cool that he can sit with the angels and he can do whatever he wants. He's going to tell Allah, Ana khayram min. <laughs> so what did Allah do? Allah cursed him for that. Arrogance. Leads a lot of people into sinning. Do whatever you want. Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam said, live however you wish, because how you die is how you live. So to be arrogant like that, and to have this in your heart, Muhammad sallam said, the person with the mustard seed of arrogance will not enter where? Jannah. Y'all want to go to Jannah? Of course, all right. One brother said, of course. <laughs> I see y'all brothers, are just, I just want to go home, man. You stop this line. I'm hungry, brother. I don't want to say yes. <laughs> it's hard to say yes. I didn't eat in 12 hours. It's like I'm asking y'all to do push-ups. Y'all want to go to Jannah? Yeah. All right. So we got to try to remove this arrogance from us, don't we? To do things in front of Allah that nobody knows about, to remove the arrogance. I know of a brother who told me secretly, and I'm only saying it because it's beneficial to the lecture. He would find a masjid where nobody knows his name. And he would go there and he would just clean the bathrooms without being asked to do so. To humble himself. I'm not going to tell you his name because I would defeat the point. But to humble yourself in front of Allah, to have secrets between you and Allah, would remove that arrogance from us and to erase that sin of arrogance. Another thing that causes us to sin would be the idea of greed. You want something somebody else got. You want the dunya. So we go and do things that get us the dunya, quote unquote. 
We might say things that aren't supposed to be said or do things that aren't supposed to be done, earn our income in a way that isn't supposed to be earned and all of it just to get the dunya. But it's interesting because you forget who provides it in the first place. Inna Allah huwa al-razzaq dhu al-quwati al-mateed The same dunya that you're breaking rules for comes from the very one that you need forgiveness from in getting it. So how does that actually make sense to us? And may Allah forgive us all. I, I, you know, this isn't something where like the speaker is somehow alienated from all of these things. May Allah forgive us all. And there's an us that's a sinner. And that's why we all raise our hand in here. We all have these things. And may Allah forgive us and save us and, and, and allow them to uh, be defeated within us. Because really, you disobey Allah while expecting provision from Allah. And the answer to that, of course, is, well, they do it. <laughs> like kids, right? The non-Muslims can do whatever they want, and I can't do whatever I want. That's how we behave. We don't say it that way. We don't say it in that much of a childish way. We make nicer and prettier um, words for it. But really, that's what it is. But I'm asking you, brothers. Look at what Allah has done for his enemies. Enemies of Allah. If you look at the popular du'a to shayateen, if you want to say that, the du'a du to shaytan, if you look at them, does Allah provide for them? He does, right? Some of them very well, actually. It's a test for you, isn't it? But that's what happens when we say, when Allah said, yeah, he does provide for them. But this dunya doesn't mean so much to Allah, does it? What's the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said? If the dunya was worth the weight of a mosquito's wing, they wouldn't get even a drop of water to Allah. That's why we have to wait. And that's why we do things for the sake of Allah. And Allah will provide us with the purification that we need in our rizq and in our wealth and in our well-being so that we can worship Him properly. And if things come along the way, well, no worries. This is the dunya. The pain is temporary. Here When you're worried, when you're fasting The days can get long But trust with a surety that the adhan from Maghrib will be called The day will come to an end eventually Just like our lives will come to an end eventually And would you rather meet Allah having billions of dollars And being an enemy to Allah Or would you rather meet Allah having what you have and worshipping Him That's the question that we need to ask ourselves because a beggar who prays is better than a billionaire who doesn't. I don't care what you've done. And I don't care how many apps you've made or how many computers you've made or how many launches you've went to the moon and how many different chat whatever you've built. A beggar in the street who prays is better than a billionaire who doesn't. So the dislike of the risk or the greed that we have causes us to sin. And may Allah forgive us from that. Dislike of the qadr. You don't like how Allah made you. Qadr. Brothers, I'm blind. Did you know that? Have you heard? <laughs> Has it been said? <laughs> Does that mean... Because I'm blind That I get to just run rampant Through the world and do whatever I want First of all I don't know how far we're going to run But walk Walk rampantly through the world And do whatever I want Does that mean I could do that? Does Allah just give me clear You know, You're blind, do whatever you feel like Is that how that works? So if I get upset with the qadr of Allah And I start saying I'm blind, I'm blind, I'm blind I could do whatever I want, right? No, I can't why not? I didn't ask to be that way. 
I'm not being serious. I'm just, you know what I mean? Like that's, the, that's what we say to people. That's what people who don't like the Qadr say. I didn't ask to be here. I didn't ask to be born. I didn't ask to be tall. I didn't ask to be short or blind. I should be able to do whatever I want. Displeasure with the Qadr of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to us, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها اكتسبت ها لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت Allah doesn't give a soul more than it can handle so when Allah when I was born blind was that a mistake no it was not a mistake. If someone was born in poverty, was that a mistake? No. Somebody was born deaf. Somebody was born with cerebral palsy. May Allah make things easy for all of them. Is that a mistake? Allah does not make mistakes. How you are born is how you are born and it's how you're supposed to travel through this world. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah doesn't test a soul beyond its scope. Now what about the sins of Hafsa, of the Malik? What happens? The heart becomes darker and there are certain effects that come from sins. Allah slows down the provision. You ever see how things aren't right and you try real hard and you're running through the dunya but you just can't seem to get it? You can't seem to make the proper connections to get the results that you want. Check your sins. Check your sins. It affects the provision. Allah lessens the provision for the sinner. And that's actually a mercy for the sinner. When I was in, in a way, in some ways it's a mercy for them. When I was in, uh, in Toronto in the early part of the 2000s, we had a basketball player here by the name of Hakeem Olajuwon. One of the best ball players that ever played ball, mashallah. And he was here, and, he, and Allah allowed him to be a friend of mine during the time he was here. And he said something very interesting to me. Because he was a multi, he is actually a multimillionaire that prays. And I used to tell him, because I was a little kid back then in my 20s, and I said, money's corrupt. Money's corrupt, brother. Imagine. <laughs> it's just because you ain't got none, that's why I say it's corrupt. Money's corrupt, I said. And Hakeem told me, very softly, as is, his, as is his way, may Allah preserve him, he said, money unmasks people. Either they're good or they're not. And money unmasks them. So sometimes with the sinner, when the provision is stricken like that, it, it lessens his ability to do damage. But check your sins. Check what you do through the day, what you say through the day. And it may very well be affecting your risk. Number two, it affects the Knowledge that you get. Trying to focus on the Qur'an and you can't. Try to memorize the Qur'an and you can't. Why? Imam Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, someone came to him and asked him that question. And he said, stop sinning. Stop sinning. It affects the qalb. It affects the, the learning. It affects the knowledge from coming to you when you do that. So we ask Allah to protect us from not learning Islam because nowadays learning it is very crucial. Even if it is 10 minutes a day, even if it is 20 minutes a day, if you can sit through a whole classes, then mashallah. But even if it's a little bit, try to learn and to protect that, lessen your sins. Number three, anxiety. Sins cause anxiety. People are scared. Don't you tell anyone about me. Don't you talk about my sins. They say, Khutbah is being read and you think it's for you. Listening to the khutbah. You hear a sin in the khutbah, you think, oh my God, he knows. How does he know? Head starts to do this, right? How does he know? How does he know? How does he know? How does he know? He doesn't know. Anxiety. If your sin involves another person, are they going to rat me out? Are they going to tell on me? Are the people going to find out? It's the tightness in the chest that comes from sinning. If you don't do it, then they can't say you did. And if they do say they did, you're a liar. Or they're lying about you. 
At least let it be like that. Because sin causes constriction in the hearts. You don't want to go to the masjid because you feel bad. You know what's interesting about shaitan? The liar that he is. What does he tell the sinner at the beginning? Allah is ghafoor rahim. Do whatever you wish. Allah forgives everything, brother. Allah is most merciful. Allah ghafoor rahim. Allah akbar. You guys do whatever you want to do. You talk to whoever you want to talk to, right? Want to be Gmails. Want to be top Gmails, right? Send in too many emails to too many females or too many details. All these different things you're doing. Allah ghafoor rahim, akhi. I'm giving her dawah, you say. Right? <laughs> I'm giving her to what exactly? You definitely are giving her dawah, brother, but to what? Allah ghafoor rahim, akhi. And then from the intent to the outcome, <laughs> shaitan is all with you, taking you all the way. Through the intent, all the way through the outcome. And at the end of the outcome, what does he say? You can't ask forgiveness. You've done too much. Allah was, <laughs> Allah ghafoor rahim at the beginning, at the intent. Now at the outcome, shaitan tells you, you can't ask for forgiveness. Allah doesn't forgive you. You see how he dances with you and takes you all the way around. One minute, Allah is ghafoor rahim. He can forgive everybody and everything and everything from everybody. And then when you do what you do, at the end of it, shaitan says to you, you can't be forgiven. You see the lie. You see that lie. Same way at Fajr. Shaitan tells you what? You have time, brother. Relax. You know, the person who invented the snooze alarm was a criminal. <laughs> Truly a criminal. That person... Invented laziness or digitized laziness. The one who invented the snooze alarm digitized laziness. Shh, go to sleep, go to sleep. And you start drifting away and drifting away, and you catch yourself and you make wudu nice and slowly. You get up, you pray, Fajr, you. Allah Akbar. And then every single problem you've ever had in your life floods your head. You got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. You got to call your mom, you got to call your sister, you got to call your kids, you got to talk to your family, you got to go grocery shopping, brother, you got to pay your rent bill, your light bill, your phone bill, all the different things. Before you said Allahu Akbar, you had all the time in the world. And now you don't. You see the lie. Understand that we are all going to meet Allah. And the anxiety of the, of the sin to meet Allah should be greater to us than the anxiety of the people finding out. Now what are some of the cures? Because it looks pretty bleak, doesn't it? Everybody is sinning out here, brother. Malik's sinning, brothers are sinning, sisters are sinning. This guy in New York, he's paying for his sins, first part of it now. Stormy nights are expensive, dog. Out here getting in trouble. Causing corruption all over the earth. What's the first thing that we should do? Ask forgiveness. Ask forgiveness, Akhi. Who do you ask? But do you know who you ask? When we say Allah, do we think about who Allah really is? Have we internalized that? Have we tried our best? And you'll never internalize it, by the way. When you meet Allah, that's when you'll actually know things. But to the best of your ability, based on what he said, Jalla wa'ala, do we even look at the incredible way that our Lord describes himself? A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Huwa Allah Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu Alimu al-ghaybi wa shahadati huwa ar-rahmanu rahim That he is Allah Alladhi la ilaha illa hu That there is nothing, nothing at all Worthy of worship besides Allah People can worship as they will, but there is nothing 
worthy of worship except Allah. Alimul ghaybi wa shahada. The knower of the unseen and the visible. The witnessed, if you want to say it that way. To Allah, it's the same. Again, from the intent to the outcome, Allah knows everything, akhi. Allah knows why you're sending all those emails to all those females. Allah knows precisely why. Allah knows your screen name. Mr. Dawa Warrior 1968. Allah knows who exactly who you are. And if you insist on being like that, all I have to say to you is tick tock. And I don't mean the app, I mean the time. Y'all heard that, see? The brother in the front caught me, that's right. Tick tock. As you wish. Say it fast if you want, brother. It goes faster than, it goes actually faster than he said it. He said it real fast. Tick tock. That's actually how it goes. While you're on here, just remember, tick tock. Because Allah will take everyone to account. So ask forgiveness and know who you're asking. Yes, Allah Ghafur Rahim. Yes, Allah is the most merciful and the most forgiving. Yes, Allah's mercy overshadows his wrath. Yes, I didn't need Paul to change the call. Allah forgives all. Alhamdulillah. But you got to ask and you got to mean it. You got to dislike what you did and you got to stop it. Ka'b ibn Malik said that the one who fasts with the intention to displease Allah afterwards, his fast is batil. You see all these non-Muslim girls, and that's why I'm saying this on here. You hear about all these non-Muslim girls that at the beginning of Ramadan, the little Muslim boyfriend disappears. Exactly, right? But then after Eid, he calls them again. Oh, hi, Lisa. I just had to go away with my family for a month. It was a religious thing. Intent, outcome, tick, tock. Stop it. If you want our sins to be forgiven, stop it. Ask Allah to forgive you. Ask Allah to give better for you and stop it. Or may Allah guide that Muslim girl and make her better than them. That's what I would say. Because sometimes that happens as well. The non-Muslim can absolutely take shahada. Sally can become saliha. And you just get left. If you're not doing it, not you. Not you. I'm talking about the ones that are. <laughs> no one in here does anything like that, I know. But they might be listening, so we're doing it for them. Ask forgiveness from Allah. But know who you're asking. Number two, if your sin involves someone else, ask their forgiveness. There was an alim back in the day that said he would rather have 70 sins in front of Allah than to have one sin with the creation of Allah. To hurt people, to harm them, steal from them, take their dignity, take their money away, take their wealth away, take their honor away, talk badly about them, hurt them. Simply saying astaghfirullah helps, certainly, but you have to ask their forgiveness if you can. Now if you can't and it's going to cause a bigger problem, don't. Because some people will go and do that and cause an even bigger problem. But may Allah forgive us all for the sins that we do and cause others to forgive us. Which is number three, forgive the people. Forgive the people, akhi. Ahmed ibn Hanbal said that what benefit is it of yours that your brother be thrown in the hellfire? How does that help you? I want so-and-so to go to hell because of what they did to me. Really? Like that's, and, and I get it. Sometimes people have done some terrible, terrible things. But forgive. Forgive. Why? Why should you forgive? Because you want to be forgiven. Not for them. Allah may still punish them, by the way. Just because you forgive so-and-so for doing such-and-such such doesn't necessarily mean that Allah will. You don't know how many other so-and-sos he did such-and-such such too. Just because it just means that you're not letting them live rent free inside your head anymore. You're not constantly thinking about what they did to you. And what they did to you may be terrible and I'm not diminishing that. 
But forgiving them removes them from your head. And you don't even have to tell them. Let Allah deal with them. Those who forgive, those who show mercy on earth are shown mercy from the heavens. Number four, develop a relationship with the Qur'an. And there are others, I'm not going to mention them all here. I'm going to mention some of them, but these are just the four that, that, I've, that I've researched and learned about. Reading the Qur'an reduces sins. Does it? Yes, it does. Reduces sins. This is what? This is the month of the Qur'an. When you're standing here in, in Salah, or anywhere for that matter in Salah, whether it be here, whether it be home, try to understand what you're hearing from your Lord. <clears throat> Try to understand what it is that your Lord is saying to you. هذا كلام الله. When we say أحسن الكلام كتاب الله, the best of speech. There are other there are other speeches, but this is the best of them. The book of Allah is the best speech, and to know what Allah likes, to know what Allah dislikes, to know what He loves, even to know what brings you closer to Him, and to know what takes you far away from Him, you have to learn from Him saying it to you. We can only do so much, أخي. I'm only going to be here for a few minutes. And, and, and me and Ramadan, mashallah, and, and Masjid Farooq have one thing in common, and that we only visit like once a year. Me and Ramadan and Masjid Farooq, we come once a year. So I can only do so much. The brothers that come here, Abu Shahada, can only do so much. All the Muhammad Qadi can only do so much. When you sit at home in your house, read the book of Allah because it erases sins. Having wudu. Small things, akhi. Small things, small things lead to great things. When you wash your hands like this in the wudu, what happens? What's coming off? Sins. Not just water. Sins. You're in your mouth. You said a lot of stuff. You ran your mouth online. You're in your mouth. What comes out? Sins. You blow your nose. Sins. You wash your face. Sins. All that's coming out. Sins. From salah to salah. What's being erased? So keep up your salah. For the men not to pray, you have to be either incompetent or, un or, or, or unconscious. You, you don't have a week off. You don't have time off like the women do, brothers. For us, we don't have any reason not to pray. You either have to be insane or out cold. <laughs> That's it. Is that right or wrong? Do the men have any reason not to pray? Do we get like postpartum stuff where you don't get to pray? Right? If your wife has a kid, do you get like six months off? You know, <laughs> you know? Brother, my wife just had a kid. I don't have to pray. Does that happen to us? No? No? Just keep doing this here. I, I see you. I see. <laughs> just keep shaking your head at a blind person. I'll see you. I see you. <laughs> Do y'all yell at deaf folks? If I, if I was deaf, y'all be screaming, yes! <laughs> Mashallah. That's how you erase sins. Greet your brother with salam. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Give me, brother. Only me hanging out here, dog. All right. Zakallah khair. See what went, what, what just got erased? Sins from me to him. Our brothers, we just lost some sins, me and him. Salaam alaikum wa barakatuh. I want another one. All right. More sins gone. See? MashaAllah. If you love each other, spread the salams bainakum. Afshuh salam bainakum. Erase the sins. Can you imagine? All the different ways to erase sins in Islam. No one has to shed their blood. No one has to die. Isa ibn Maryam was not crucified. Paul doesn't have to change the call and annoy all y'all. <laughs> I had a lot of Paul rhymes today, isn't that something? Allah forgives sins if you ask. Allah forgives sins if you repent. Allah forgives sins if you make islah. Allah forgives sins if you send salawat and salam on who? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that's the next one. أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدَرَكَ وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ الَّذِي أَنْقَدَ ظَهْرَكَ What's the next ayah? وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ Who was that for? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Salawat al-Rahman wa salamu ala Habib Allah Erases sins. 
Good deeds you get with that one too. You elevated ranks and you get good deeds and your sins are erased. There's so many benefits to sending salat and salam on the best of Allah's creation, the most beloved to Allah, Muhammad ibn Abdullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Only the most greediest people wouldn't send salat and salam on the best of Allah's creation. Salawat al wudud wa salamu ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Why? Because it erases sins. Erases the sins. Another one is, and this is a big one for our brothers and sisters. I made a lot of jokes up here. I did. I, I, I rhymed a bit and I said some things. And may Allah forgive me for, the, for any, any boundaries that I may have crossed. But this is very important and it's not a joking matter. When Allah says to us, Akhi, قُلْ قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي Who's that? Us. I love that brother. What's your name, Akhi? Shout it out. Ma, what's that? I didn't hear you, but I'll see you after the, after the, event, after the speech, inshallah. I love that brother. He shouted it out. Qul ibadi. Us. Us. He didn't just say the servants of Allah. That's what I was expecting. He said us. Who's that? Us. <laughs> That's you. قُلْ عَيْبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Now that may not be us. It probably is though. Absolutely. <laughs> Say to my servants who have wronged themselves. Sometimes your sins can hurt you, brother. They can make you feel like you're not worthy. They can make you feel like Allah will never forgive you. Again, the lie of Iblis that I told you before. Allah has killed it. He said, قُلْ يَا عَيْبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ to never, ever, under any circumstances, to spare the mercy of Allah. La taqunatu min rahmatillah. Life isn't over. It's not an end, lost cause. You can be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Jalla wa ala in a hadith Qudsi, that I will forgive the sons of Adam all of their sins and I will not mind. If they don't, as long as they don't associate partners with me. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can erase your sins. Allah can help you make things right with the people that you've wronged. Allah can do all of that. Don't, don't ever despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah was talking to people when he said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي أَلَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا أَنفُسِهِمْ عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ they have wasted themselves. He didn't just say they've wronged them. Wasted. Asraf. Israf. They've wasted themselves. What do you say to them? La taqunatu min rahmatillah. That never despair the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunubat jami'a. Allah can forgive any sin. Every sin he can forgive. Erase it from you completely. That happens on judgment day. Inna hu huwa al-ghafur al it's the best of forgiving the most merciful. Ya arham ar-rahimin, arhamuna, fi dunya wa fi al-akhirah. Amen. May Allah forgive us all in this life and in the next, which brings me to my final point for today. What month is this? <laughs> That's a good one. How are you? All y'all on that one. MashaAllah. This is Ramadan. This is the most wonderful time of the year. Did you know that? Y'all know that's the most wonderful time of the year? We don't have elves. We don't have reindeer. There's no big guys in beards going to give you gifts. Of course, unless you call them dad. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only guy in a beard going to give you gifts. Muhammad Qadi might give you a gift, possibly. MashaAllah. But no one's going to slide down your chimney and land on your roof. It ain't the most wonderful time of the year for that reason. It's the most wonderful time of the year because Allah forgives more people from the hellfire than any other time of year. The gates of hell are actually closed right now. Closed right now. What are they? Closed. You're not going in. If you die in Ramadan, guess what? Akhi, inshallah, the rahmatillah, you are safe. Why? Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who fasts out of sincere faith and conviction and hope for Allah's mercy has his, his sins, for his past sins, what? 
forgiven. His past, the previous sins will be forgiven if you fast with Iman wa Tisaban. In Allah Jalla wa'ala, in this month of Ramadan, the burning month, the month that burns the sins away. This is the month of the Quran. This is the month where Allah has locked the doors of hellfire. This is, what is it? Shut, uh, the month of the Quran, the month of Ghufran from Allah Jalla wa'ala. And we ask Him to accept our fasting and we ask Him to accept our, our, our qiyam and our. All of our acts of ibadah and our, our zakah and our sadaqah during this time of, and also sadaqah erases sins as well. It washes away sins the way water washes away fire. That's the sadaqah. Do that in this month. Increase your salawat on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah l- allow you to leave this month just like the day that you were born with no sin whatsoever. Allahumma aslih lana. May Allah ta'ala allow us all to um, meet him in the best possible way. Oh, and I do have another final one, actually, that I forgot to mention. A dua, uh, a sayyid al-istighfar. Learn that. That's your homework for now, inshallah. If you don't know a sayyid al-istighfar, learn it. And if you know it, and you know someone who doesn't know it, teach it to someone else. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant khalaqtani wa ana abduk wa ana ala ahdik wa wa'adik mustata'at أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك عليه وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت Learn that dua if you don't know it and if you know it teach it to everybody that you know because you'll get the reward for it may Allah forgive you from all of your sins Ramadan Mubarak from me and mine to you and yours Jazakum Allah كل خير and it's nice to be with you again inshallah hopefully um, I'll be with you before the next Ramadan inshallah ta'ala love you Muhammad Qadi Hope you're not mad at me, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.